Hi everyone, this is Justin. So today I'm gonna try epoxy scalp for the first time. Epoxy scalp is a kind of uh, epoxy putty made by Aves. So I'm just putting on uh, knit rile gloves because it protects my hand from the epoxy. I mean to be clear, it's not really toxic. You still don't want to get into the eyes or anything. A lifelong exposure to this thing creates allergies because it builds up in your cells and doesn't leave. So I'm just trying to extend the working life of I mean of how long I can work with this material before I become allergic to it. So I have to wear gloves and sometimes masks. Well, not really the mask. So anyway, here I'm just trying to uh, make an armature. If you see the uh, the larger gauge of wire that is just on the desk, that I was gonna use that, but I decided to go with a smaller gauge instead because it makes more sense. Okay, I use aluminum foil to build a volume around the armature because you wanna you wanna save on the amount of uh, the clay you actually use because it could get pretty heavy after it's cured. Oh, by the way, uh, epoxy scalp cures by itself after a couple of hours so full curing takes 24 hours yeah you don't need to bake it or anything which is great by the way another reason you wrap aluminum around the armature is so the clay has something to grab onto when it's curing it's very important i'll also wrap additional wire later on around the chest and pelvis and other important areas so you have more areas for the clay to grab onto. You just give it texture to grab onto pretty much. The base, by the way, is just pipe ends. PPC pipe ends that you can get at any hardware store. So I just pick one that's of the appropriate size and weight of what I need and I go with it. And here I'm using steel stick, which is a kind of epoxy putty used to repair plumbing and stuff like that. So it's heavy industrial stuff, you want to be very careful with it. This thing sets in five minutes, pretty much unmovable. That's why I'm wearing gloves. Don't get this on your skin or eyes, guys. Yeah, yeah, dangerous stuff. You gotta work with it quickly. That's why also I'm putting petroleum jelly on my gloves so it doesn't accidentally cure to my gloves. Otherwise, I would throw it away and waste a perfectly fine glove. Just mixing them together until it changes color or heats up. That's how you know it's good to go. And I'm wrapping a little foil around the base so I can adhere it on top of it. You might have noticed that I actually mixed this before I wrap aluminum around the base, so I had to redo that and waste some of the uh, steel stick, unfortunately. Yeah, I make dumb mistakes sometimes. Oh well, carry on. And now it's time to mix the epoxy scope. So this comes in two parts. You have to mix them together. There's my tools, they're brand new. Putting Vaseline on my hands so it creates a barrier between me and the material. It's not a lot of risk, but again, I just want to extend how long I can work this thing. You know, I don't want to be allergic to this too soon. It feels like scooping ice cream, actually. It's pretty cool. Um, so after I mix it together, I let it sit for 20 minutes. This is so it's not as sticky. As it's really sticky early on, it's very hard to work with. So wait 20 minutes and then come back and it's easier to, to work with it. 
Unless you really need it to be super sticky, then you might want to wiggle it earlier. It's no right way, way to do this. I mean, this is the first time I've worked with this. Aside from this, I've worked with a green stuff, which is another kind of epoxy putty for miniatures, for Warhammer and stuff like that. So it's slightly the same, but also different. I got a lot of my knowledge secondhand from the internet before I decided to use this material. If you have a chance, check out Scott Flanders. He goes by Shape Carver on YouTube and all of social media, actually. Uh, amazing artist and designer. And he's really into sculpting with epoxy sculpt, so I. That's how I clue in on this material. Okay, I'm using the bunch up aluminum foil to create a rocky texture on the surface of the base. I'm starting to shape the muscles on the legs stuff. Well, pseudo muscles because again, my anatomical knowledge is pretty weak if you watch my figure drawing video when I try to force myself to draw back again. So I'm very much just doing gestures to be honest. Now that's what this is all about, right? It's about practicing the gestures of the human form. And then as I increase my anatomical knowledge, I can bring more structure to my art. But for art to feel alive, you really need that gesture. I have a friend who teaches piano. He tells me the same thing, that when he teaches students, he teaches them gesture first. Because that's, that's the key. Uh, if you're wondering why I go from bottom up, it's because as it cures, it, be it becomes heavy. So that's kind of dangerous if you start from top down. So I go from bottom up so it has more structure. And I don't I don't leave one side, the left or right, um, too, too heavy. So I try to balance it out. Like I'm not gonna do the right arm and then do the left arm. I try to cover both at about the same time if possible uh, you, you'll see so here I'm adding a bit of a kid bashing element to it uh, it's, so it's this is not a pure sculpture because there is a assemblage opponent to it assemblage art so uh, speaking of assemblage art there is a artist called Chris Kalski Kuski He's specializing in uh, assemblage sculptures, so he gathers a bunch of, you know, found objects, random objects, sculpture, and he c creates original compositions with it. It's very much kit bashing, which is a um, something that we do in Warhammer and miniatures wargaming, the hobby aspects of the community, where people take uh, parts from different things and create their own miniatures with it instead of just following the standard way to build something so yeah it's a very cool thing so this is a very minor kit bash it's, I'm just adding uh, a cockpit from a, a dust addicts miniatures mecha miniature an access one specifically to the back of her head to help form the back of the head yeah it's very alien looking oh by the way I'm very inspired by HR Geiger here so this piece could get a bit creepy I'm just adding cables to her head and sculpting her face her parts of her body it's pretty cool 
add cables to where her tailbone would be and extend that into like to wrap around her leg. It, it's kind of like sexual and erotic, which I guess really fits the subject matter on hand. It's weird because I also thought of uh, Donatello's David when I was doing this. He added a feather on the legs sensually and that it's very interesting. So I kind of wrapped that cable around her uh, right leg, the right thigh. And if you look at it from the front, it kind of looks like she has a male genitalia, which such as androgyny, uh, asexuality. Again, touching back on Donatello's David, his David is also a very androgynous figure, uh, famously so. I don't know, it just feels very guy guard and high renaissance to do stuff like that. I don't really have my own style, but I'm very interested in subject matter and different artists' work, so I guess I'm exploring. So this was supposed to be about gesture and expressionism, but I kind of went a bit overboard. I add all these interesting elements to it. It still serves the same purpose, I just decided to have more fun. It's the first time working with material and I want to make something cool. By the way, the, uh, the, the clay around the top of her chest and wrapping around her shoulders and the back that's supposed to be skin, like it's peeling off, revealing the biomechanical parts of the rest of her body. So if I ever paint this thing, which I think I will, I, it will be even creepier, I think. Yeah, I didn't realize how thick the arms would be. It really does look like just skin to wrap around a uh, mechanical underlay, but this is definitely a mistake more than a feature. Should, uh, shouldn't have used them. Shouldn't have used that much aluminum foil. Uh, yeah, on the armature. I decided to go for expression, expressionistic hands instead of detail hands, which would require like a lot more work, because this is about gesture. If you look at my gesture drawings, I don't usually draw the fingers unless they're trying to gesticulate or express something. I think I'll call this Geiger Expressionism, not the name of the piece, but just like the style of work. It's, it's inspired by Geiger and it's expressionistic, but not deliberately so. It's because I'm not really skilled enough to push this to realistic boundaries, so I have to kind of just express myself with what knowledge I have. I'm pretty happy of how this turned out. I learned more about the material and its limitations, and I think the next piece will go much faster. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment. I'll try to get back to you on that.